Hello. It is a beautiful pre-dawn morning for launching space planes. So let's go ahead and talk about space planes in the new kernel. Um, pardon me if I sound pretty bad. I'm just getting over the flu. And I wanted to talk about how the one thing that I really like about Kerbal Point 9 is space planes. Um, and the reason is because they are super useful for racking up cash. And I'm going to show you how right now. This is a pretty basic space plane. It's the sort of space plane you still have to buy the rapier engine technology tree, and that's a little bit expensive, but everything else is very basic. It's just a standard fuel tank with a rapier engine attached to the back. And up front, we've just got a drone core. <coughs> you can use any drone core. And a uh, docking port junior, in this case. And then I've got a uh, shock cone intake stapled to the top of that, and two more stapled to the outsides of the wings. Um, and that's pretty much the entirety of the plane. One thing worth noting is that we are using Werner engines here, and that means we don't have to have any extra RCS stuff aboard, which saves a little bit in both parts and weight. The fact that we have three of these shock cone intakes and only one of these engines means that we have an operational uh, ceiling of about 30,000 meters, which is pretty nice. So right now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, start climbing towards that goal. At about 12,000 meters we'll start to be a little bit more cautious because we want to start building up a lot more horizontal speed. Like so. And from here we'll basically just coast until we hit 30,000 meters and our jet, uh, our jet engine turns into a rocket engine automatically. Oh, did I? Yeah, I did. I did take up the, the gear. So, um, the sun's not quite up yet, but it'll be coming up over the horizon any second here, I think. One of the great things about using uh, small, lightweight space planes like this is the fact that we don't have to uh, worry about physics acceleration screwing them up. Alright, I'd like to get about 400 more meters per second of speed before we switch over, so I'm lowering our trajectory to try and just get that last gasp of speed. Now our engine could switch over, and there we go, it switched over just then. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our orbit on the orbital map here, and we're trying to catch up to our refueling station because we're not going to be able to pull this off without refueling. So you will have to put a refueling station up if you would like to do it this way, but it's not a big deal. So we've got a descending node, we might as well go ahead and fix it up. We're high enough in the atmosphere that there's very little chance of us flipping out. There we go. I think we'll be fine at this point. Let's go ahead and just move into space. Uh, we're almost into space right now. Just need a little bit more height here. And there we go. We, we need to raise our periapsis to about 98,000, a little bit less than 98,000 meters because that's the height of our refueling station's orbit. That'll do. And now we'll just let the refueling station slowly catch up to us. We'll raise our apoapsis a little bit on this pass, just because I don't like waiting. And it's not like we have a limited amount of fuel. We're planning to refuel anyway, so we might as well, you know, refuel. Might as well use the fuel since we're gonna have to refuel anyway. That's what I intended to say. I'm still a little bit sick. <coughs> 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 
That might have looked like an out of control spin, but it was not. I was simply going to orient us along our angle here. Yeah, there we go. That's close enough for our concern. This is a pretty aggressive approach. Normally you'd uh, take another orbit around and use less fuel coming at a slower speed, but uh, I'm recording live and I don't plan to edit this, so uh, I gotta do everything a little bit fast and furious, you know? Like I'm stealing cars in 30 seconds or less. Okay, so here we have our target. And we're coming in at 115, which is a little bit fast. Let's go ahead and push ourselves we're arranging ourselves so that our vector is... we're pushing the back of our vector up uh, to the back of its vector, which will slow us down slightly and will also align us properly, which is a good combination of things. See? Very close. Now we're starting to drift the other way, which is only to be expected. And we're getting kind of close, so we might as well slow down a little bit more. That should be plenty slow, I think. So, oop, a little bit too fast there, I'm afraid. Let's go ahead and try that again. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to docking controls. Uh, that was actually way too fast and furious, you know? I, I didn't mean to go nearly that fast and furious. But it's okay, we didn't break anything, so it's fine. Now we're going to turn on our RCS, but our RCS is actually not RCS. It is Werner engines, so that means we have a lot of thrust, way too much thrust. So I'm going to hit caps lock to, uh, to kind of short it out a little bit. Uh, the caps lock makes all of your inputs lag quite a bit, or rather, uh, g they're, they're far gentler than they normally would be, and that's exactly what we would like at the moment. Now, I know that we have a clampatron right there, and we have a clampatron right here, but you can see that there is, in fact, an engine on top of, uh, I mean, a, an intake on top of ours. This is not a 100% reusable plane, um, because that engine, uh, that, uh, sorry, that air intake is never going to come back down to Earth. Not a big loss. We will live with it. Alright, so, one of the other big uh, important details here is that we absolutely cannot let ourselves smash these beautiful solar panels. So that involves uh, two things. First off, we would like to rotate so that we're pointing in the correct direction. We've got to approach it from the middle of them, like, like this. And then we got to go ahead and spin so that our wings aren't going to slam into them. Seems fine to me. Now turn our RCS back on. Now we could use just a little bit more turning, so... Like so. And bring it down. RCS back on. There we are, that's fine. And this is a standard slow approach. Um, what we're going to have to do when we get real close, though, is we're going to have to turn the RCS off. Now, a lot of times you don't have to do that, but in this case the RCS is supercharged, it's turbocharged, and, uh, and the Werner engines just have too much thrust, they'll end up making it almost impossible to safely dock. So once we're sure that we're on course, we'll turn that all off, and we'll just let the magnets take a hold. Oh, we're not exactly aligned. That should, should be okay. We don't weigh anything. And then we just take fuel from our fuel tank here and uh, put it into our fuel tank here. Oh, 
Okay, with that done, we can get back to our ship and go in our way. Now, what exactly are the missions we're trying to pull off here? And when I said this ship was useful, what the heck was I talking about? Well, these ships are really, really useful for... Um, there we are. These ships are really, really useful for uh, uh, satellite missions. So what I've done... is I have taken two satellite missions and we're going to accomplish both of them with this drone here and no satellites. So we have two missions as you can see and uh, we could either go out to the outer one and then the inner one or the inner one and the outer one. I don't know that it matters very much. We'll go ahead and start with the inner one since it is a little bit closer. Uh, but we want to make sure to try and align our periapsis and our apoapsis so that's what we're going to do now. Um, we don't want to fire until we are at the periapsis on the outer, on this outer orbit here. We want to be aligned with that before we fire. This is a bit of a wobbly orbit that they've got us in going into here. That will do. Let's just double check and make sure we're not about to boost straight into our ships. And we're not, so it's all good. Let's go. So our apoapsis is going to be 4.9 million. And then we'll go ahead and accelerate. We're not going to try and do our descending nodes because um, it's actually much easier to do them once you're lined up. So we'll line up first. So our apoapsis needs to be pushed a little bit to the right, but that'll make us too high. I guess I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, let's go ahead and bring our periapsis up to 3.9. Now the only thing left to do is bring ourselves into proper alignment on the angles. This is where it really matters that your peri... Oh, see, you didn't even have to, because that's when it really matters whether your periapsis and your apoapsis are lined up with theirs, because if they're not, that part can become really disturbingly difficult. It's much easier to do it like I've done it, and now all we've got to do is extend our periapsis out to 12. So, let's go ahead and wait. It's in more or less the right spot, so we'll just push it out once we get a little closer. I think that should really be confetti or something when you hit a, a goal, rather than it just vanishing. Because, I mean, those are big goals. 12-2, huh? No problem. Just gotta make sure we don't hit the moon. That would be awkward. Alright, and now we've got to expand our apoapsis up to 14.37. Oh, let's not do it quite yet. Let's try and keep our periapsis a little bit aligned as much as possible, which means being just a touch later. Oh, uh, well... Yeah. Oh, of course it's going to flip. What am I thinking? 1449. 12.2. That's actually pretty close. I think we'll just go ahead and uh, hit the descending node over here, and it should probably trigger. Oh, there, it triggered without it. So now what we want to do is land on the planet. The problem is that if we were to land right now, we would be landing on the dark side of the planet. 
trust me when I tell you this, uh, you want to adjust your orbit so that you are going to come in on the dawn edge of the planet. And, uh, and that means that we would like to uh, maybe deorbit now. This might even be a little bit early yet. That, that'll do. Now, you don't have to actually come to a safe halt or anything because we're a jet. All we have to do is get back in the atmosphere. Uh, there is a question as to where Kerbin Control will be, KSC will be, when we get there. There's no easy way to tell that without any plugins, and this is purely vanilla at the moment. But we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll come in on a braking trajectory, and if it looks real good, we will turn it into a landing trajectory. So that's a good brake height, 42, 41, 40. Uh, those work great on the planet Kerbin. It looks like this is not going to be a landable um, pass. Nope, Kerbin uh, controls on the dark side, so we'll just let ourselves slow down in the atmosphere. Whee! We're not actually spinning out, I'm just doing that for kicks. And you can see our apoapsis dropping nicely, as aerobraking does. The Kerbin command is right here. So it was almost viable, but landing in the dark is a huge pain in the butt. Also, I forgot that we have one more detail. Uh, we actually have a third contract, and that contract is to get science data from near Kerbin. So, um from around Kerbin, I think the word is. So once we're back into space here, I'll need to actually trigger our science experiment that I brought along. You can see that the uh, Werner engines on the front here point forward and backwards in alternating sets, which seemed to me to be the most efficient way to put them in. But, you know, it's up to you how you want to design that stuff. So that'll be our third contract filled, and all for the price of fuel and one air um, intake. And that air intake wasn't absolutely vital. If we wanted to make it just the price of fuel, we could have managed that. So um, this also looks like, looks like it's going to be on the dark side if we wanted to try and land it, so we're not going to. We're just going to let it descend again. Just bad timing on our parts. So basically, a refueling base can make these uh, small flyers into a very, very powerful uh, money source. Uh, we just completed three contracts, basically for free, and, uh, and that's how you're supposed to use these, I think. Uh, however, I can't seem to get the Mark III's off the ground, uh, or get them into space. There's just no way to rig them up to engines that I've found. Um, I'm sure that there are mods out there, but the vanillas don't seem to have any way to attach them to engines, and that's really no good. Um, I wish that there were either larger engines or some kind of quad coupler for the Mark III's. Such a shame that we're still using Mark II's only. Mark II's do have their place, of course. Um, and I think that this is going to be... That's about as viable as we're going to get, I think. We're still going to be landing in the dark, but I've run out of patience. We'll go ahead and land in the dark. So to land in the dark, we're just going to bring our apoapsis down again. And we're actually going to purposefully try to overshoot, and then we'll turn around, because that'll give us a little bit more time, uh, and we will, we'll be landing with dawn behind us, which will be much more viable than just landing in the pure dark. <clears throat> All right, since we're going to be diving here, we want to keep tight control over our vessel. And there's KSC right there. It is quite possible to lose control and flip out. We're going to do it at least twice. But this vessel is uh, pretty rugged, because uh, it's quite small. 
as long as we're not at four times physics acceleration, we will be, we'll be fine when we flip out. We just can't afford to be flipping out that, you know, at four times speed, because that'll, that'll cause physics aberrations and the wings will snap off. Just a nice, gentle deceleration. We're not going to try and do any fancy turns to try and bleed off more uh, air or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to air breathing mode just so that we will never run out of fuel. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to wait, wait for it to bring us down to maybe 800 or so. That'll work. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn and try and bring our uh, ourselves around. Now we're going to want to do this at basically full thrust because um, we don't have really very much in terms of wing <coughs> wing control. We don't have very many lift surfaces and we don't have very many controls. So we're really, really reliant on our thrust to bring us down. And this is where our first flip out is going to be uh, right about now. Oh, well, we held on a little bit better than I expected. Probably still going to flip out, though. <coughs> oh, we're going to spark out for a while. I actually didn't expect that. Come on, come back online, you jerks. Yep, just bring it under control. Obviously, you can build a much more stable space plane. Um, I just don't didn't feel any particular reason to. <laughs> That's better. So if we take a look, we actually have quite a bit of a hike, so I'm going to go ahead and pop us back up into the upper atmosphere for that. Um, there's no particular reason to hang around down here where the weather is hot and sticky. That'll do. Whee! The reason I just tipped down like that is because I just realized our solar panels are... Uh, we have no back-facing solar panels. Oh dear, we're going to overshoot again, aren't we? Well, I could turn on our... Um, closed cycle mode and go for it. Yeah, why not? For some reason I thought those mountains were where we were supposed to be landing, but it's actually more like here. The mountains are quite a bit inland and I forgot that. So this is going to be a nice, fast crash. Switch our mode back again. Looks like we might have to bank turn one last time because I don't think we're going to manage to actually bring this in quite this hard. This is a little bit, little bit aggressive, <laughs> but that's okay. Every minute we delay is another minute the sun has to rise. I think it's time to start pulling out of this nosedive. Oh! We could actually land this thing on its tail, but I don't think that's what we want to do. I want to go a little bit north here. I don't want to cut out completely, just mostly. Uh, oh! Hmm. 
I um I think maybe some of the physics have changed in point nine. Anyhow, that's how you do it. Aside from the ending, which uh that's not how you land the plane in the end. Um I have landed this exact plane before, so I'm not sure why that suddenly exploded. It really, really, really exploded too. Um fascinating. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and that's how you use space planes, aside from the last five minutes.